It's literally moving the light source around and you can see the shadows forming and wow. from your nose on your face. I can put it on one side, I can get that little, a lot of real photographers who like to have the light, they like to have the little triangle right, on yeah. the shadow side. You can do all of that, it's really, really exciting. That's, cr that's crazy. Hi, this is Patrick from Tech the Lead, and we're here at Mobile World Congress Barcelona 2019. I have here Simon Fitzpatrick, Senior Director of Product Management and Imaging. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. I know, yeah. yeah. We should try to fit it on a business card sometimes. It's a real <laughs> challenge. Right. <laughs> so we were here with you last year talking about AI and smartphone imaging and videography. Yep. Can you tell us what has happened in the last year? So, uh, you know, Last year we talked a little bit about how I enabled us to do a lot more within images, to pick out detail, pick out features on people's faces, and do things with that information, whether it be make them look that little bit better, get rid of spots on their faces, just beautify them in general. Right. Um, and AI has really stepped the game up for that. We've been able to do that for a long time, even before the more neural network approaches were available to us. But now with that technology, yeah. it's really changing the game, and it continues to change the game and puts us closer to our vision, which is to give people the ability to do amazing portrait photography, you know, with the touch of a button, where a photographer would need, you know, would use a deflector, he would use a flash unit, he would use fancy camera with fancy lenses like this gentleman here is using, he would use Photoshop, he would do a, a lot of money, a lot of equipment needed. We're trying to condense that all down into this push of a button so when somebody takes a portrait, they get the best possible uh, experience with that. And that's what we continue to get closer to that vision. We're not there, right. it'll take a while to get there, but we're getting ever closer to it. I hear that this new technology that you have, is it called 3D Portrait, correct? Yeah. 3D Portrait is in LG's new smartphone, the LG G8 ThinQ. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so what's really exciting now is, and we talked a little last year and that 3D sensing was starting to appear on the market. We had the uh, Apple had launched on the iPhone 10 with their structured light system. But now more and more vendors are starting to adopt it. It means we now have better 3D information that we can use on top of the neural networks to give a better experience. And so what LG and ourselves have worked together to put together was um, an experience which, which incorporates the ability to recompose the lighting on the subject, oh. just like you would in a studio. So a really good photographer you know, knows what direction the light should come from right. to get the right lighting on a face. And what LG has in its own phone, it's branding, it's spotlight. Yes. We call it 3D portrait relighting. Right. And that's one element of our 3D portrait solution, which I'll talk a little more about. And what that enables you to do is just recompose the light in real time on video. Oh, wow. And it even has a really cool feature you can cast a shadow. So if I move the light source, say, with behind my hand, okay. I can see the shadow of my hand on my face, even though it's a virtual, it's not a real light source. Right. So it's like augmented reality with lighting. So it's changing the lighting. And if I move that light away, the shadow goes away. Or if I jiggle my fingers, you can see it in real time, which is really unique. And it's real wow. exciting on the LG phone. They're the first to do this. And then when you take the photograph, right. You have the capability to do that again. If you didn't really like what you did in the original photograph, the information is still there because I've got a 3D depth map and I can use that information to say how the light's shadows should be rendered on the face. So you're telling me I can take selfie portrait on my phone or in video and just move the light source wherever I want if I don't like it? Yeah, exactly. So it's basically giving you that ability to go, oh, I didn't really like that photograph, but the moment's gone or the person's right. gone. So when I just go back and recompose it, so I can still tweak it, right. or I can just try and get it right first time. It depends on the person. Some people just want to press the shutter button. Right. Other people like to play with sliders. It's really up to the individual. And we're trying to enable both experience, but do it all in a small form factor where there's no fancy keyboards. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, make it as simple and as accessible to everybody. Not just the best people who know all about right. how to use Adobe Photoshop or whatever. It's to make it more Democratize is right. what I like to say. That's crazy. I, I spend like 30 minutes trying to relight my photo in Photoshop. Exactly. To do that at a touch of a screen. Yeah. It's crazy. It's literally moving the light source around and you can see the shadows forming and wow. from your nose on your face. I can put it on one side. I can get that little, a lot of real photographers who like to have the light, they like to have the little triangle yeah, on yeah. the shadow side. You can do all of that. It's really, really exciting. That's, that's crazy. So you talked about how 3D Portrait has other features, yeah. not just Spotlight. Yes. Can you tell us more about those ones? So we've worked with another one of the major OEMs. I can't really say who it is, but you know, not everybody likes us to talk about right, right. the fact that we, they use us. 
Uh, and what we've done in their case is we've enabled them to have, we have four main features within our solution. So we talked about the, re, the relighting element where you have this 3D, we use the 3D information to relight the image. Right. We also have what we call foreground processing, yeah. which enables you to do things like lens flares okay. or sun flares across the top of the image, rendered in a realistic and it's got to be meaningful, right? You right. can't just throw it on randomly, it has to be related to where the light is coming from, right? Yeah. So that's got to be very well done. Yeah. And then you've got background processing, and background processing enables me to do nice things like bouquet. Okay. And with a depth map, I'm able to do, I get the whole torso, I've got the face of the person in a 3D system. Uh, but even in a 2D system, I can still use the AI technology to mat the person out of the photograph okay. so that I can create a background blur. Oh, it's wow. better when I have a 3D because yeah. I can do more of a gradual blurring effect. Right. But even on a 2D, I can get quite a believable effect based on matting technologies, which is an AI for cropping you out okay, of yeah. the foreground. And then the final feature is more of our, we've been the leader, we were the first to do this. As many as 10 years ago, we had um, our beautification solution. Right. Um, and that's really changed. It was a fun feature to start with, yeah. but what we're going for is believability, realism, skin texture needs to be still there, not blurred like some of the uh, our competitors would do. Spot removal, let's remove the right spots, not just, if you have a beauty spot, you don't want to do that. Right. You know, the eyes make, get rid of some of this bagging, but not take 200 years off somebody who's 50, right. take five or 10, just right. make them look a little better. Because we all want to look good in images, you know, it's, that's, that's what the game is. That, that makes sense, yeah. And what's the, do you have any timeline for this roadmap of yours? Well, we're largely dependent on an ecosystem of, of ourselves and other people. Okay. But the challenges we face are you know, having the right data to train the neural nets. Right. And we're working on that at the moment. We're doing a massive program with, we have this rig with uh, literally hundreds of SLRs taking images of people that we can render into 3D at very, very high quality. And we can then put hats and caps on it and do different things with it. And, and we need that data to train our algorithms for the phones. We need to be able to do it with optimized power and optimize uh, frame rates if you're shooting in video, right, right. you know, so things like that are really important. And then the other thing which I think we need to see evolve will be, we work closely with 3D sensor vendors, so at the show here, uh, Infineon PMD Technologies are one of our partners, for right. example. But although we'll work with any of them, we've worked with lots of the others as well. Um, they have uh, sensors of relatively low resolution, so we need to see that go up. But it all has to be balanced against having the, not having too much draw on the battery and having good performance, high frame rates for video, high uh, quality like 4K rather than HDR, or sorry, HD quality videos. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I hope when we're here next year talking with you, we can talk more, as you said, about how the smartphone is getting closer and closer to that professional yeah, camera. Yeah, I think these are exciting times. I'm really, really glad to be part of this. I just, I just It's a real ride for me because I just love photography, always have, so right. I think it's a, it's, it's a good time to be in it. That's going to be, you, wait, just watch this space. It's going to get more and more exciting, I guarantee it. Well, I, I look forward to seeing how Xperia takes photography and videography to the next level. So thank you again, Simon. Thank you. And stay tuned with Tech to Lead. Make sure you subscribe.